Hello, my name is Tyson Carter and I'm the manager of client education and communications at IMT. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is how do you work with uh, attribute history within IBM Infosphere MDM Inspector? So today we're going to discuss a little bit about how attribute history works. The first thing to remember is that data itself is fluid. As you evolve and grow and change, so does your data, whether that's a change in address, a change in status, uh, a change in name. As you grow, your data grows, and so MDM keeps attribute history of those changes. Let's take a look in the interface. We'll begin here in Inspector, where I will inspect an entity for Lawrence Warren. When I go ahead and pull up this entity for Lawrence, we'll see that his current name shows Lawrence Victor Warren. But if we look at the attribute history, that's this little clock pointing backwards, I can see that he's actually had a few different name changes over time. His original name was Warren Loeza, then he became Lawrence Warren, then Larry Warren, then Lawrence Victor Warren. And as these changes have come in over time, they've made changes to the record and made those updates as appropriate. But there's other attribute history that may exist as well. For example, his address may, as, may have also changed. So let's take a look. Here when we look at his address, we see that he's moved a couple of times uh, within uh, the same city. As we look at this data, we can see the status of I for inactive versus A for inactive. We also see when the data itself was physically created and when it was last modified. So essentially what happens is this first address was created on January 23rd, 2018. The second address was created on March 14th, 2018. The third address was created on May 9th, 2018. But the addition of the third address becoming active inactivated the second address. So that timestamp is the moment that it became inactive. Similarly, this oldest record, while it was created on January 23rd, on March 14th, it was updated to show inactive. Now, there's other ways that we can view attribute history. We can also see attribute history from the attribute history tab. When we're here on the attribute history tab, we have the ability to see all of the attribute history for all of the attributes. Right now, it's showing uh, 1 through 10 of 18. So if I flip to the next page, there's 8 more. The number of records allowed on this page is configurable. So if you'd prefer to have everything all on one page, that is something that can be configured. We also have the ability to sort and filter this screen. So if I wanted to sort this first by um, attribute and then by creation time, I could go ahead and establish that sort. And here we see it's first sorting by attribute, then creation time. I also have the ability to filter. So when it comes to filtering, I could look for a specific attribute. In this case, I'm just going to look for patient name. When I add this filter, I'm now only viewing the patient name elements. If we were to find out that there were a value that never should have belonged here in the first place, uh, we could change the status from active or inactive to a status like D, which means logically deleted. This is mostly done when we're resolving potential overlay tasks. If I save this, that value, that name that's been logically deleted, will no longer be leveraged during searching or matching and linking. So I hope this gives you a good idea of what you can do with the attribute history area. Again, you can get to it directly from the attributes themselves 
anytime you see this little clock icon or there's an attribute history window that's accessible both at the entity level as well as the member level. Thanks and we hope to see you again in the next video.